Hey YouTubers, I hope that there are Christians watching this, I hope that there are Muslims watching this, uh, whoever else is watching it, you're all so welcome, but it's in particular these two groups that need to hear this. I am a Christian, I left Islam not too long ago, and I understand what it takes for a Muslim to leave Islam, and why they most of them can't even begin to think about leaving Islam. And I was one of the lucky ones who who had a past that was quite um, difficult in terms of um, my, well, my spiritual well-being, my emotional well-being. Uh, I, I was a child, I was a teen and an adult that was always in distress spiritually and I was always looking for answers and from a young age I journaled I had a lot of problems as a kid uh, mentally although it was nothing serious I suffered from social anxiety I had a sleep uh, difficulties I walked in my sleep I I had multiple visions um, I saw things I heard things that weren't there and I would have uh, times when I was extra depressed or extra sad, you know, it was, um, although on the outside I looked pretty perfect and in, um, in terms of um, what I did with my life, people would, they would look at my family and would, they would think that this family is perfect because we, we really fulfilled all the criterias of what the world defines as a perfect family. But on the inside, we were all very confused, and we had identity crisis, and we were lost, and we were all really looking for um, some kind of salvation that Islam didn't really offer, but we wanted to get as close to it as possible. And in this, just growing up this way, and also um, coming from a family that was so loyal to their traditions, cultural and religious traditions, I... I mean, from my teens, from my late teens, I started um, rebelling against a lot of these values that we had. And at, my, at the beginning of my 20s, I hit rock bottom after I had failed a few exams in, in um, university. And uh, this time was one of the most difficult times in my life when I didn't, I was stuck in a rut. I didn't get any further in, in terms of my education or with job or anything and this was a time when I did a lot of soul searching I spent a lot of time trying to find the answers to my questions and at some point during this time I, I prayed to God for clarity for truth that no matter what that meant I was ready to receive it and God gave me this person I met a man at that time who I fell in love with very hard and you know we we clicked very well and this guy happened to be very very good with um history with theology with politics with all kinds of things that um can explain religion and so we had a lot of discussions about that and through him i discovered uh, that islam is a lie and that christianity is the truth because he you know, him and I, we had a lot of debate, uh, debates, and he would present arguments, and I would try to say counter arguments to why he was wrong and I was right. And we kept, you know, having this dialogue until I realized that after many being offended many, many times, that I was wrong about Islam, and that there's something that's fishy, something fishy is going on here uh, that I need to figure out. And not too long after that, I found that Islam is a lie and that Christianity is the truth. And really, this person that I was seeking, he had been an, he had been an atheist before, uh, but he had found Christ uh, through someone who had used very similar methods as he was using on me. And if I have understood this correctly, I don't know. <laughs> that detail, but I do know that the only method that really worked and that I think will work on Muslims to see the truth about Islam is you have to be tough. You can't be afraid to offend a Muslim. 
most people who come from Middle East, they're raised with honor cultures and all these tough values of Islam. Um, that everything they do in life is driven by shame, fear, guilt, and all these negative emotions. We can't use uh, some nice, uh, more uh, politically correct um, tactic to show them the truth. You have to show them what it is as it is. And the way you do so is you have to agree on that you're going to have these debates and it's going to be a, you know, you're going to show arguments and it's going to be um, with an objective point of view. You're going to approach it objectively with a scientific method and you're going to have no predetermined assumptions about anything and really look at things as they are and then see what you th what you think. If you can, you know, defend it or, or not, you deal with that later. So you have to take these steps, and a lot of people who, who explain things to Muslims, they don't do it this way. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why you fail in doing so, in, in trying to show them the truth and the lies. And to Muslims, you have to not be afraid of questioning the source behind your faith. Is it really valid? Is it really hard evidence that Islam is the word of God? How, why are you sure about this? You have to know. You can't base your whole life and live on, you know, relying on something that you don't have sources for. You have to question it. Islam encourages Muslims not to question the source, saying you have to trust. But you can't trust things blindly. Um, because, you know, everything you do, you have to know you're doing it. Because it's the truth. <laughs> I mean... That's how you have to approach things. You can't be a person who blindly, who, who believes things blind, blindly, or whatever you call it. You can't do that. Um, so you have to not be afraid of going to hell. You know, typically Muslims are afraid that if they even question Islam, they will go to hell. Even uh, wavering their faith, they will go to hell. Don't. Because if you really are that faithful, and you really are so certain about your faith, you shouldn't be afraid. You would, you would have counter-arguments. You would know how to defend your religion. If it's perfect, if it really is from God, there will always be an argument. And uh, it's not a matter of that that they can't see the truth, the ones who attack Islam. No, no, no. It's the matter of that you can't hear their, you cannot hear their arguments. You cannot listen to the things they have a problem with and respond to it with a good answer. That is the problem. You've been taught what answers to give, but you don't really hear what they have to say. And that's a huge warning sign for you. Another tip for you Muslims is, don't turn to other Muslims for advice. They have the same mindset and perspective of Islam as you do. They're not going to give you a new insight. You have to turn to non-Muslims to hear why they have a problem with Islam. If they are wrong, your faith is going to be stronger. If they're right, you're going to be led to the truth, which may mean away from your faith. But if you want to learn something new, if you want to get uh, a new understanding, you can't go to people who understand things the way you understand them. And lastly, you can't be a chicken. You have to be brave. If you want to know the truth, you have to face the uncomfort that comes with it. You're going to have to be ready to leave your family behind. I, I had to. I had to block my whole family and my relatives from my life. I had to flee from my home and live in secrecy and um, start from scratch, pretty much. No home, no money, and find a way to get that help from the government. I am in that place today, but I can tell you this, um, it was worth it. It was worth the fight because I'm, I'm doing it for something I know of something I believe in, something I am sure is the truth. Would you do this for Islam? I really don't think so. I think Islam is, is very convenient when everything is fine. But you know, just as well as I know, that when things are the worst for you, when, you, when life is most difficult, you actually leave or get away from Islam. Because Islam doesn't welcome imperfect people. Islam teaches you that you're not you're not um, good enough if you sin. 
you're not worthy of praying to God. But if you do certain things, you're not worthy of even being in the household of a Muslim. Uh, and that if you have if you have certain values, you are to be cast out of the group and um, killed. But that's another story for another time. The point is, you and I both know that you would not do what I'm doing right now. Leave your family behind, leave popularity, success, money, house, uh, warm food on the table, leave all of that. Uh, a lifetime of memories behind for Islam. Because you don't know why you believe in Islam. You just do. And that's a huge problem. Thank you for um, listening. I hope to make more videos, but I want to know what to talk about in the coming videos. So please leave a comment in this, in the, uh, here below and tell me what you want to hear more of. And I'll see what I can do. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next videos.